Hi guys, this is Unit 8B, and we're going to be working with parallel and perpendicular lines. For today, we have two main objectives. I can write and manipulate the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines, and I can determine if two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Once again, I think by now you guys can tell that slope-intercept form is not going away. You still need to know that that is y equals mx plus b. You also will need to know your slope formula if you are given two points. We have m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So once again, make sure you have those down. We have two key terms for today. Our first key term is parallel lines. These are lines whose slopes are going to be the same. They will be identical, exactly the same. Perpendicular lines are going to be lines whose slopes are opposite reciprocals. Opposite reciprocals. So, let's review for a minute what exactly this opposite reciprocals means. If I were to give you a slope of negative 2 over 3, and we were asked to find the opposite reciprocal. First of all, the opposite means, since this was negative, mine would have to be positive. So that's okay there. That's what opposite means. One will be negative, the other will be positive. The reciprocal part means we need to flip-flop our numerator and our denominator. So since we have 2 over 3, the reciprocal of 2 over 3 would be 3 over 2 and they're opposite reciprocals because this one is negative and this one is positive. If we look at another example, I could give you a slope of positive one-fifth. If you want to go through and find the opposite reciprocal, first of all, one over five, we would have to take the reciprocal, so we would have to flip this to get five over one. Since my original was positive, my slope would have to be negative to be its opposite reciprocal. And then this, of course, we would go ahead and reduce to negative 5. That's all it means to be opposite reciprocal. Different signs and a reciprocal. It needs to be flip-flopped. Two requirements. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first couple examples. Our first ones we're going to focus on is we want to go ahead and find the equation of the line parallel to the line that we're given in slope-intercept form. So off to the side here, I want you guys to go ahead and write down, well, what's your slope-intercept form again? y equals mx plus b. Underneath parallel, I want you guys to make a note that we have the same slope. That's what it means if our lines are parallel. So what's going to happen is you guys are going to be given a point and you're going to be given a line. Okay, so first of all, let's start with that point. We want to start by just going through and labeling our x and our y. You guys are used to this by now. It's going to go through the point negative 1, 4. The new part here is we know that it's going to be parallel to net y equals negative 5x plus 2. Well, if it's going to be parallel to it, that means my slope is going to be the same. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the slope of this line that they gave us. We want to identify the slope of the line that I just highlighted in yellow. So in this case, my slope is always in front of my x term. That's my m value. So we have negative 5. Now we want to set up for our problem. For our problem, we have the point negative 1, 4. And our slope is going to also be negative 5 because parallel lines have the same slope. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use slope-intercept form to go ahead and write the equation of this line. So you guys know how to do this part already. Really the only new part is picking out what our slope would be. So we know we have y equals mx plus b. We know our n value is negative 5. The x value I was given is negative 1. My y value is positive 4. And we need to solve for b. When we do this, we get 4 equals a positive 5 plus b. We need to go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides. And soon enough, we find out that b equals negative 1. We want to make sure we actually are writing the equation, though. And we need to be in slope-intercept form. So here we have to take our b value, and we already picked out our m value. So my final answer will be y equals negative 5x minus 1. We just take y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form, 
and plug in our slope and our y-intercept. So really not too bad. Only one step that's different from what you guys have seen. So let's go ahead and try the next one. We are now through the point negative 3, negative 3, so there's our x and our y value, and we're parallel to the line y equals 7 thirds x plus 3. Okay, so once again, we are parallel to, so we know our slopes are going to be the same to that line that I just highlighted. So let's take a look here. The slope of this line, you guys should be thinking right away, I know my slope of that line is 7 thirds. It's the number in front of x. We're already in slope-intercept form. So for my equation, when I go through and list this out, I'm through the point negative 3, negative 3. And my slope is also going to be 7 thirds because they're parallel. They're the same. So now we can go ahead, set up our slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. Plug in our slope. My y value is negative 3. My x value is negative 3, and we need to solve for b. We have negative 3 equals 7 thirds times a negative 3, just gives me a negative 7, because those 3's cancel out there, plus b. And we need to get b by itself, so we add 7 to both sides, and we find out that b equals 4. Once again, don't forget we need to write the entire equation, so I have y equals my m value is 7 thirds, so 7 thirds x, and my b value is positive 4, so plus 4. And there is my final answer. So with parallel lines, you guys should be thinking, hey, I know how to do this stuff. I've already done it before. There's just one extra step. Okay, so go ahead, skip those u tries. You will do those in class and flip your page. Now what we're working with is now we're dealing with these perpendicular lines, okay? So again, make sure you circle, highlight, star, something that perpendicular. And again, we want to get all the way to slope-intercept form. Off to the side, please write your slope-intercept form again, which is y equals mx plus b. And underneath perpendicular, I want you guys to write opposite reciprocals. Because remember, these are not the same now. They're opposite reciprocals. Here's how we're going to start. First, start by labeling your x and your y in that point, like we always do. Now, we have to look at the line that we're given. So we're saying our line has to go through 0, 5, and it's perpendicular to y equals 1 4 x minus 10. The first thing I want you guys to do is pick out the slope of the line they gave us. You guys should be saying right away, okay, my slope is positive 1 4. Now, when it comes to writing our equation, we're still going to write out our point like we did in the last few examples. But the difference is now we need to come up with our slope. Well, their slope was 1 4. We need it to be opposite. So first of all, theirs was positive, so our slope's going to be negative. And we need it to have a, be the reciprocal. So instead of 1 over 4, we want 4 over 1, or just 4. So my point now is 0, 5. My slope is negative 4. From here, it's exactly like you guys are used to. We're now using slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b, and we're plugging in what we know. Okay, so my y value is 5. My m value is negative 4. My x value is 0 plus b. So right away, we should find out that b equals 5. And don't forget, we want the actual equation on the line. So for my final answer, y equals, make sure you go back to our slope, not the slope of the line they give you. The only reason we want this line is to find out what our slope is. If it helps you, you can even cross this out once we identify our slope. So we have negative 4x, and my b value is positive 5, so plus 5. And there is my final answer. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Again, label your x and your y value. The slope in the line they gave me here is negative 2. So you guys should be pretty quick at picking that out by now. So we want to write the equation that goes through negative 7, negative 2. But since it's perpendicular to this line, instead of the slope negative 2, we need it to be opposite. So ours is going to be positive, And we need it to be the reciprocal. Well, this is like saying negative 2 over 1. 
So our slope is going to be positive 1 over 2. Now we can go straight to filling in slope intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. When we do this, my y value is negative 2. My m value is 1 half. My x value is negative 7 plus b. So yeah, we have a fraction here, but that's okay. 1 half times negative 7 gives me a negative 7 halves plus b. And to solve for b, we need to add 7 halves to both sides. And when we do that, we end up with b equals 3 over 2, or 3 halves. Lastly, we still need to write the equation. I'm going to cross this off because we're done with that so we don't get confused. My slope is 1 half. My b value is 3 halves. So for my equation, we have y equals 1 half x plus 3 halves. Final answer. We have one more case to look at, okay? And this is example 2, part C. Once again, I'm going to start by labeling my x and my y value. This time, I'm perpendicular to the line x equals 9. Now, what I want you guys to take a look at is right away you should notice that x equals 9, that's one of our special cases. Since we have x equals 9, that is telling you that we need to be perpendicular to x equals 9. If we have x equals 9, the only equation that's going to be perpendicular to that is y equals a number. Because if we take a look at this, x equals 9, that's going to be your vertical line. So the only thing that will be perpendicular to that, or that will form a right angle, that's what perpendicular means, that is going to be y equals a number, or your horizontal line. Okay, so what we want to do is to write this equation. Once we figure that out, we know it's going to be y equals whatever y value they give me. So y equals 5. Final answer. Okay, so go ahead, skip those next few u tries, and flip to the last page. Our last page is going to be to determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. What we want to take a look at is parallel, we know we have the same slope. Perpendicular, we know they are opposite reciprocal slopes. And neither, they're going to have neither of these two relationships. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. What we want to make sure before we can compare slopes, we need to be in slope-intercept form. Before we can compare slopes, we need to be in slope-intercept form. So for our first one, we're good. All we want to do is list out the slopes of each line. So if we look at our first example here, y equals 3x plus 15, my slope is positive 3. If we look at our second example, my slope is negative 3. So I want you guys to go ahead and list those out so we can see them a little better. So m equals positive 3 in the first one. m equals negative 3 in the second one. So now let's take it one piece at a time. First of all, is 3 the exact same thing as negative 3? No, so we can eliminate parallel. Next, we move to perpendicular. Do they have opposite signs? Yes, but are they reciprocals? Well, the slope of this is like saying 3 over 1. So to be a reciprocal, this would need to be 1 over 3. So they're not perpendicular either. So since they're not parallel and they're not perpendicular, this one is going to be neither. That is going to be neither. Now, if we look to our next example, we have one equation that's already in slope-intercept form. So right away, I'm going to write out my slope. It's negative 1 half. But if you look at our first equation, we are not in slope-intercept form there. We're in standard form. So we're going to have to actually do a little work here, and we're going to have to solve for y before we can determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to rewrite this. So I have 6x minus 3y equals 12, and we want to get y by itself. So we're going to subtract 6x from both sides. On the left, I'm left with a negative 3y. On the right, we cannot combine these, so we have negative 6x plus 12. And keep solving. Make sure we divide everything by negative 3. So y equals 2x minus 4. Now that we are in slope-intercept form, we can pick out our slope of this line, which is a positive 2. 
So what we are comparing is we are comparing this slope to this slope. With comparing these two, right away we can rule out them being parallel. They're not exactly the same. Next, we have to move to perpendicular. Do they have opposite signs? Is one negative and one positive? Yes. This is 1 over 2. What would the reciprocal of 1 over 2 be? It would be 2 over 1, which is the same thing as 2. So these two lines are opposite reciprocals, which therefore means they are perpendicular. And again, since they are perpendicular, that means when they intersect, they will form right angles. That's what perpendicular means. Parallel means they will never intersect. Okay, so we're going to skip the next couple of U-tries. You'll do those in class. Make sure you fill out the rest of your note sheet after watching this video. What can you do? What do you still not know how to do? And what are you going to do to help yourself?